Welcome to In The Mix with yours truly, Jeannie Ortega, coming to you from the Sunshine State, Orlando, Florida. It's my honor to be your host today on TBN's Salsa Network. I want to say thank you to Matt and Lori Crouch, as well as Reverend Samuel Rodriguez, for another opportunity to boast on our God. With this show, it's my heart to highlight people in media, movies, music, and ministry that are doing things for the kingdom of God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from heaven. Well, it also says that God has given to each and every one of us a gift to share with each other as good stewards of his amazing grace. Today, I get to introduce you to somebody that is doing just that. She's right here in Orlando, Florida, the founder and CEO of the Room Ministries and Worship Leaders Association International. I've been traveling around this city and I hear of this beautiful psalmist. Everyone, give it up for LaRue Howard. She's doing her song, Almighty God, off the album, Live at the River. Thank you. 
taking up residence right in the midst of your shout, right in the midst of your hand clap, right in the midst of your hallelujah. Come on, give God praise right now. Lift him up, magnify him. He is worthy of praise today. Hallelujah. Be glorified, be glorified, oh God. Yes, God, we praise you now. Miss LaRue Howard, my God. <laughs> you, you done set the atmosphere in praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise I God. am grateful to, to just have you on and share about your amazing testimony. Amen. You know, we, we done set the atmosphere <laughs> with praise. Hallelujah. We overcome the devil by Amen. the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. And Amen. I got a chance to see a glimpse of your testimony. And I thought it was so powerful. First, I want to say this. You are stunning. Oh, wow. You're <laughs> glowing. You know, Praise and as God. I watched you worship, you know, you see the glory of God on you. And I think sometimes women, we see women yes. like that and we're like, wow, they're amazing. And they don't realize that we go through the same journeys, the same struggles that they, that they do. So yeah. let's talk about, you grew up in South Carolina. Um, Southern girl. Yes, which I love. I'm, I'm, I'm from New York, so yeah. I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm all rough around all right. the edges. So, all, you know, Southern women are just so nice and <laughs> homey. And I'm like, yes. So I'm here now in Florida, so I'm trying, you're, to, you're trying to get there. Yeah, things. transitioning. <laughs> Um, but you know, you you had a rough upbringing. It wasn't it wasn't like what we see now. So right. tell us a little bit about that and just yeah. kind of how your journey began. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, my parents uh, divorced when I was seven years old, mm -hmm. um, and part of my testimony is that my parents were in a domestic violent uh, marriage. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting going through that as a child. You don't realize you know, it, well, going through it, looking back as an adult, you don't realize the impact yeah. that that has on, on children, mm -hmm. you know, being a part of that type of, of family. But, you know, learn, looking back now, you, you, it's like hindsight is 20, 2020. Yeah. You know, you, you, get, you get, understand more about what was really going on. Yeah. Um, being an adult, yeah. you know, you understand more about relationships. Um, and but I you, think as a kid, yeah. It, what it does is it starts to shape your identity in a skewed way. Because I understand, I it can does. relate. It does, absolutely. You know, I think the, one of the biggest things that, but one of the biggest impacts that it had on me was it instilled fear, mm. unlike anything else. Wow. Um, fear of not being safe, mm. fear of yeah. uh, putting myself in a vulnerable situation. Wow. Um, not that I was ever physically harmed, yeah. but, you know, not feeling safe as a child. Yeah, there's no peace in the house. Right. So where do you go? Exactly, exactly. And so, you know, as an adult, stepping out on faith, you know, doing things such as leading worship, yeah. um, starting Worship Leaders Association, wow. just stepping out, just stepping out in faith, you know, you, you fear wow. not being safe. Yeah. You know, so wow. th I think that was one of the biggest um, understandings and biggest things that I've re realized that that yeah household had an effect on wow. me. Yeah. And then you, you know, you eventually when your mom, you guys move yes. and you get into music yes. and you get into church, mm -hmm. you're doing all of that. Talk to us about just the power of music because I love the fact that, you know, I'm a singer and music is what saved my life. Yes. God used it as a tool and yes. I didn't even know God to do that. And I would love to hear from you just as someone who has now, you know, you have this incredible long career mm -hmm. in this field. Just talk about the power of worship and music and yeah. the impact. Cause you know, not all music is worship music. Right. Or actually it is. <laughs> You're just worshiping Some, you, to yeah, one, one, one or the, or the other. other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so talk yeah. to us a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. You know, I was, uh, when I went to college, I majored in vocal performance mm -hmm. and um, uh, just Early on in my walk with the Lord, I asked God, what was my purpose for, for life, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and he gave me a vision of me ministering on a stage. And so, you know, I knew that it was going to be something along music ministry, but I had no idea of what that, yeah. like, how do you do that? Um, but, you know, and I got married shortly after college, moved to Orlando, um, went through a divorce. Yeah. Um, and thank God I was in a church that was, div was like, their, their main drive was worship. Yeah. Praise and worship. Yeah. And I will never forget going through um, a, a, a time in the midst of going through the divorce. I was driving home from work one night and I was thinking, all I got to do is just turn real fast and just I, I'll be in the ditch upside oh. down in a car and it'll wow. just be over and I'll be done. Oh. 
And I happened to be listening to a cassette of my pastor at the time and the song was Surround Me. Mm. It was a worship song, mm. it was called Surround Me. And when I tell you that the presence of the Lord filled that car and it just, something just broke wow. off of my life. And so Ooh. it was at that moment that I realized the connection of music and worship and the presence of God yes. and peace yes. all at the same time. And worship lifts, it lifts it us. It totally lifts us. It, it's super, it's supernatural, it's divine. Absolutely. We can't really put our finger on it. I've experienced that too and just going through really dark seasons of mm -hmm. my life where even as a Christian, you know, life is still hard. Oh my gosh, yeah. We still go through things, there's still prayers that are unanswered. Absolutely. And we find ourselves in a despair mm -hmm. and then the power of worship is phenomenal. Well, it's, you know, I, I pray this all the time and I tell God thank you all the time for giving us the vehicle of praise and worship mm -hmm. to access his presence yes you know as a singer it's unlike anything else we know that when we pray we're communing with God we're speaking with God but when we are worship when you sing it's you know and I tell vocalists all the time you know we sing as as, as vocalists we're sharing a part of who we are our mm -hmm. voices is, is a part of our body you know yeah. what I mean it's, it's who it's wow. our gift it's our it's ours it's not like a keyboard or a guitar it's a part of us True. so when we worship or when we make melody to the Lord we're singing to him we're sharing a part of who we are mm -hmm. and it's opening us up even more so to really connect with his heart mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So y'all out there, be encouraged. If you're going through something, open your mouth and yeah. praise, even if you don't feel yeah. like it, because there is power in praise. Mm -hmm. So you go through this divorce, mm -hmm. you, you're praising God, you get mm -hmm. through it, yeah. and life still happens. Yes. <laughs> it's still going on. And I think that's what I was most amazed about in your story mm -hmm. is that, you know, regardless of the gift and the call on your life, mm -hmm. you know, there were still these, these mountains and yeah. these attacks but you, you overcame and you continued to overcome. Tell us a little bit more about that. D dive into the, the experiences, that the, the battles that you've had to go through yeah. as somebody that's called out. Yeah. You know, understanding some of the struggles that we have, um, the, the, the biggest thing that I would say got me through it was there was a book that I read called Secrets of the Vine. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was talking about in John chapter 15 where Jesus says that I am the vine and you are the branches and yeah. it talks about vine, branches that don't produce fruit that they're going to be pruned but mm -hmm. then also branches that do produce fruit they're going to be pruned so they can produce more fruit yeah. so you know I'm learning as I'm going through different situations um, that it's either a part of all of it is part of me being pruned so I can produce more fruit yeah. right so um, I went through the divorce got married again, mm. uh, met a young man in the church. Mm. Everything was great, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But then there was um, some things that I didn't know that were going on behind the scenes mm. that once we got into the marriage, I became aware of wow. um, some drug abuse and things like that that took me down another road, uh, the road of divorce again. Wow. Didn't, in, didn't had no idea that I would ever be in that place yeah. again, you know. Wow. Um, but, you know, I, I've learned to not have regrets mm. you know? I was just gonna tell you about that because yeah. I know I know a few women of mm -hmm. God who've mm -hmm. been through that yeah and they're what the enemy tries to do you already know he's a yeah. little weasel and yeah. he's whispering all these things and like you never thought you'd end up there right. and he's accusing and he's saying all these things Absolutely. how do you fight that voice and even open your heart to love again yeah and to trust again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like I said before, you know, realizing that God, you know, he doesn't allow, um, everything that happens is, is gonna work for our good and for our benefit, mm -hmm. right? So understanding that point and understanding that God, he, no, there are no mistakes with him. You know, there are no mistakes with him and that he knows, he knows decisions that we're gonna make. He knows things that we're gonna do before we even do them. He, he just, he has his hand on our lives. And so yeah. understanding that point, and that his grace is sufficient, his grace is with us to guard us through all, all of those situations. Yeah. It just allowed, it allowed me to lean in more to him, to mm -hmm. say, okay, God, I'm here in this situation again. What, 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 am, I, what am I doing? What mm -hmm. am I doing? Um, and I said, God, okay, I'm gonna give you my heart because I obviously am not knowing what I'm doing with it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna mm -hmm. give my heart to you. Wow. And if you allow someone else yeah. to have my heart, yeah. then I'm gonna, <laughs> 
I'm gonna hold you responsible. Yeah, for, it's your fault. Because I'm not. Listen, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this wow. again. You know. And I wanna. I wanna part there because yeah. you said something interesting, and I feel like it happens a lot in mm -hmm. the church. Or you grow up in church, or you yeah. grow up in ministry, and you're experiencing God, right? But something shifts eventually in our walk with yeah. God, where where you, you said, you know what, God, it's not my heart anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm giving it to you. Yeah. Talk to us about that moment or even the realization that you, you were kind of stewarding your own heart oh for gosh. a moment. Yeah. I mean, how many times do we do our own thing? Mm -hmm. You know, we All make up our own. Especially when you're type A. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. And then we do our, we make our own plans. We say, this is what I want to do. I'm going to pursue this. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to, I'm going to do, and I'm going to do. Mm. But then the struggle then becomes, the responsibility becomes yours. Mm. You know? And yeah. so, yeah, when I got to that point of like, okay, I've obviously not done something right here. Mm. I'm just going to give all of this, all of this to you. Wow. Um, and even with work, with my family, um, I want to make sure that I'm doing what he wants me to do. Yeah. So, you know, the Bible tells us in all, in all of your ways, acknowledge him and mm -hmm. he'll direct, mm -hmm. you know, and not to say that we don't acknowledge him, but there is a, there's a thing that we have to wait for him to give us the direction where we have to sit and say, okay, what, are, what is the direction? Mm -hmm. We acknowledge him, but it's, yeah. we, don't, we don't just acknowledge him just as a check off. Say, okay, yeah, I got yeah, to talk right. to you. But yeah. we acknowledge him and he will direct. So that means that you got to wait for him wait. To, to give you part. the direction. That's hard. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what I love, though, is that the story doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. And it's so beautiful. <laughs> like God continues to just open doors for he you does. in worship, in ministry, and then he brings you the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your one. Yeah. So tell us about yeah. that. Now transitioning from these, these places yeah. of, I don't know, okay, Lord, all right, forget it. Here's my heart. Yeah. You take it to now yeah. where you are. And there's even in the ministries and your husband, I want to hear about it yeah, all. Yeah, so my husband, we are, we'll be celebrating 12 years. My wow. new husband now will be celebrating 12 years this year. Beautiful. Um, I remember saying, I don't, I don't, if you, God, if he is not a part of my future, my mm. story, go ahead and take him out of my life now. I mean, no, prayer. don't pray, don't kill him or no. anything. I don't want him to die, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but just get him out of my life somehow. That's and, true. you know, and he would just keep coming back and he would, you know, just say things and affirm and confirm things about my wow. future. And, you know, and so eventually we got married and um, and we have a, another son. Uh, we have a blended family. We have oh, uh, wow. three children now. My oldest daughter is 23. My youngest, wow. my middle son, which is my stepson, my husband's son, mm -hmm. is 19. And then we have Parker, who is nine. Wow. So not, Parker is from both Our, you and yes, your husband. Yes, wow. yes, yes, yes. Yes. So how is it doing that, blended families? I, you know, I have family members mm -hmm. who've really struggled in that area. It's yeah. definitely not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. But, um, you know, it requires a lot of selflessness. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, a yeah. lot of selflessness. And, and, you know, acknowledging what is the big elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I know I'm not mom. Mm. My husband would tell my daughter, I know I'm not your dad, wow. but we love you and we are here yeah. for you. And we all want the same thing that your biological parents wanted, yeah. you know. Wow. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. So now you have Worship Leaders Association yeah. International. Yeah. How incredible. I was on the site last night. Yeah. I signed up. Yeah. Um, you, you're giving vocal lessons. You have webinars. Yeah. You're doing all types of exciting It's crazy. Things. What, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that. How does it's, that happen? It is insane that some little girl from hiding under the table in South Carolina would be wow. reaching people all over yes. the world, literally. It yes. just blows my mind. So um, I just recently released an online vocal, uh, let me say it right, an online vocal e-course <laughs> called <laughs> yes. Becoming a Vocal Athlete. I'm wow. still wrapping my mind around it, but where I'm teaching people from all over the world how to treat their bodies and their voices as mm. an athlete, which is what they are. And then with Worship Leaders Association, we meet every Tuesday morning at 8.30 on Facebook oh, um, nice. with a Worship Leaders Let's Chat where I'm just encouraging and empowering worship leaders from literally all around the world. Wow, and yeah. how incredible is that? Just in this new generation, this new yeah. age that we're in, yeah. utilizing 
utilizing it for the kingdom. Absolutely. You know, I do feel like sometimes in church we get accused of being behind the times. Yeah. But I think we have to be good stewards of the time that we're in Absolutely. and utilize it all for the glory of God. Absolutely. That's so great. Yeah. yeah. So Thank what do you. you have on the horizon? So on the horizon, like I said, I just released this online vocal e-course, yes. which is really exciting. Um, and then I have some big things that are coming down the pike that I'm not at liberty to disclose at this moment. Okay. But if you will follow me on the Facebook yes. Worship Leaders Association, you will see it coming very, very, very That's soon. That's great. Well, I am going to do that right <laughs> after this. And um, yeah, I'm excited. I love everything that God is doing. I mean, just being here new to Orlando, got to see you worship mm. um, at one of the biggest parks here and uh, the most popular parks here. And it was just so beautiful, just changing the atmosphere with our praise. Amen. And I thank God for you. And we're going to get the honor of hearing hearing you worship God. again. And listen, in this moment, if you're touched by her story, join her in worship. You know, we talked about worship having that power to lift. And you know, there's some things in all of our lives that we need to lift and pass and overcome. So uh, just join my beautiful friend LaRue uh, singing, she'll be singing her song, well, the worship song, Great I Am, from her album, yeah. Live at the River. be close, close to your side, so heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above, singing as one, singing singing a God Almighty, God, we honor 
Because of you. 